So what would you tell Ruger now? Right now? Yeah. After issuing the Ruger 5.7? They got some momentum. They do. Where do they go next? Exactly. I would tell them this. Get out as soon as possible your tactical carbine chambered in 5728. We know you have one in development. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they got 12 test mules sitting on the counter right now. Get it out right now, because like TD says, there is a great momentum with the Ruger 5.7 right now, and to springboard off of that and to build upon it, get out a companion tactical carbine from Ruger. Thank you. That's, awesome. that's my message. Oh, and part B of the message is, as soon as possible, come out with different colors. Yeah. Olive drab. Blue. Why Why black? Flat, a... flat desert. Why black? I mean, it's always it works. black is the first color. I actually know the answer. It probably sells the best. Yeah. Across the board, it's I bet reliable. you mo more people like the black color than any other color. And I bet you the coloration in polymer is just, don't worry about it, just black. We don't worry right. about nothing else. Just get it to market, then we'll iron it out. Then we'll do a special Arctic White Super Camo We edition. got the pores for black ready to go. Black yeah. is an easy... Easy breezy frame color. Anywho, that would be my advice to Ruger right now. First off, everyone, please, let's give a round of applause to Ruger for yeah. the Ruger 5.7. And this is serious. They did a great, great job on this gun. You'll see that as we do a feature length tabletop review. Tactical Doodle is here, guys. It's exciting. Tactical Doodles, and when Tactical Doodle is in my tabletop reviews or in the bunker, it is 4% better. Just a little bit. 4%. I actually have an app that calculates that. Well, it's mostly all the farts, but... Farts are good. You might get one or two here on tabletop. Um, we're not in the bunker because we want you to see the Ruger 5.7. We do have some stuff to show you. We have a lot of philosophy to share with you. We're going to talk about the specifics of the, the pistol. And... Uh, some really interesting developments with the Ruger 5.7 that I am going to go out on the limb and predict. And I think you guys will dig it. If you are a fan of the 5.728, hallelujah, we finally have a gun. Dude, this is, it's such a weird opener for the new year. It's like New Year's. Oh, check this out. It's an FN killer. Wait, what? Huh? Huh? I didn't see it coming. Huh? I totally did There's not see this nothing. pistol coming. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? I saw the first time I saw a picture of this, everyone underneath it said photoshopped. They're like, this isn't real. And they're like, no, I think it's a photoshop. No, it's a real picture. No, check it out. Look, you can see the pixels, man. Look, the edge, it's real. A freaking Talk week later and it's sitting and on the table. Isn't this the way you should introduce a gun? Yeah. So don't tie it to SHOT Show, please. Let's get away from that. And it appears that Ruger did get away from that. Yeah. They're not waiting for SHOT Show. They did introduce it. I'm not super familiar with their marketing or their timeline. I'm not. I stay aloof from all of that. But I do kind of pay attention. TD does too. We were surprised by this gun. I love it. No. I love being surprised and I love walking into a gun store and boom, there it is. And thanks to Gunnies, clap for them. Great American gun store. We checked this gun out from them. And we'll tell you later in the video if we're going to buy it from Gunnies, the great American gun store. Contact information below. Thank you to Wyatt and company. White and Company. That, so they set a new standard of how to introduce a gun. Awesome. It doesn't get lost in the avalanche of, hey, I'm Hi. Donnie here at Trigger Fest 2020. Check out 500 of the hottest new stocking stuffers for this holiday. Caltech has been super guilty of that. Yeah, because you glance at it, it gets lost in the yeah. avalanche. It yeah, comes out exactly. maybe a year, maybe eight years, maybe, who knows, maybe a full decade later, right. it finally gets to market with all its right. issues still not ironed out. So, uh, great job on that. They brought it to market quickly. They didn't put a lot of hype out there. Boom. That's it. That's Love that. It. Okay, so TD and I, years ago, uh, tested the Ruger, uh, not the Ruger, but the FN 5.7. Great gun. We love the FN 5.7. Look at my original review of that. It goes back to like 2009. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to tie into that, but real quick, the, the FN 5.7 is an excellent product. We like it a lot. It is very expensive. You can go watch that tabletop review. Uh, I talk about it there. Uh, it has some quirks to it. Kind of a different trigger, a Ford, Ford mounted safety on it. Uh, I think mostly the reason it has flatlined in the marketplace is due to cost. Now you have a Ruger 5.7 that is going to basically do everything the, the FN 5.7 does at half the cost. <laughs> it's, the I cost. love just hearing it. 
Because when we had the 5.7, we were looking at it going, dude, for $1,300? Yeah, this one re retails at eight, and you're gonna buy it for a lot less than that. Uh, I think Gunny's is selling it for like 369. I'm just saying if you're paying attention, I totally made that up, not 369. But it's a lot less money, so uh, that in an, in and of itself is is uh, the GC nomenclature game changer. <laughs> it's game changer. I hate saying it, but this it really in this is, case, though. this is I'm excited really when is. we have a true game changer. Exactly. And a game changer isn't just it's revolutionary. It's not different. A game changer has to affect the market. Amen. The mark you look Amen. at it and go, this will change. This will change the five seven landscape. Unlike exactly. other stuff has. Other stuff has exactly. come to market. Yeah, check this out. It's our twiddle stick right. five seven by twenty eight. It's awesome. All the AR five sevens have failed to make a dent in the yeah. marketplace. You needed a big player, a reliable player like Ruger, yep. to come out with a gun like this. And I told you I'd come out and, and tie into that 2009 awesome. FN57 review. What did I say in that video? I said the 5728, this cartridge right here, would fail to make a big dent in the marketplace until a couple things happen. One, that it becomes widely available and cheaper to purchase. And sure enough, over the last, uh, well, heck, as long as I've been doing TMP 14 years, that really hasn't changed. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's remained a niche cartridge, hard to find. Uh, major stores did not carry it. It, it. And, you know, I was right. It hasn't changed. But here's the good news. And this is the prediction I'm talking about. This gun, TD and I say, will change the marketplace. Because you're going to get thousands and thousands of people purchasing this gun, the Ruger 5.7. That's going to drive up demand for the 5.728. You're going to have other players besides Federal, besides FN Herstal, and besides Spear in their gold dot load making mm -hmm. 5728. The cost is going to come down on the loads. And lo and behold, finally, 5728 will emerge to be a more, I won't say fully mainstream, but more yeah. mainstream cartridge. From my understanding, and this is, it's been a while since I read up on it, this could have possibly been a NATO round if it weren't for Spoil Sport, Heckler, and Gawk. Kind of throwing a fit and saying their version of the the tiny SBR PDW around what it in a world where this was a NATO cartridge you'd be able to get you know what Turkish you'd get a case of Turkish five seven oh it would have been it would have caught on a lot better right but, but it's, it's orphan I, I don't want us to go over the moon on five seven two eight I'm not over the moon on the caliber I'd much rather run five five six yeah I've said that you've said that in multiple tabletops we stick with that. But for SAWC, like when size and weight constraints is very, very important, 5728 is a great option. It is uh, ballistically efficient. The FN SS197SR comes out at 20, 30 feet per second and puts out about 360 foot pounds of energy. Smoking. In a tiny, tiny centerfire cartridge. Not a rimfire, centerfire. Okay, so we don't want to dwell a lot on the 5728. We've already spoken much on it but it's capable for its size. It's capable for its size. And the point we're making here is with the Ruger 5.7, you're gonna see a lot more loadings come out and you're gonna see the cost go down, predicts a nut and fancy project. And I hope this video helps that process. Hopefully. I bet a lot of team peers are gonna see this review and they're gonna to go to their gun stores and buy an FN, uh, I keep saying FN, Ruger 5.7. And by the way, you should go to Gunny's. Not your local gun store. Yeah, thank him for having this because this was sitting right. in Wyatt's rack and he's Wyatt. like, oh yeah, have you seen this? Wyatt. We're taking pre-orders for him. They right. should be here soon. What? Even Wyatt said, it is a <laughs> fluke we have this this soon. We got one. <laughs> so it's a fluke that we're, ba we're able to do such a timely handgun review. Sorry that we're not more timely, but we're not part of the gun launch, launch media. We're not third-party advertising. We're not on the take. So... Sometimes that just means the GRVs come out slower. Yeah. All right, we need to get rolling here because again, feature length, 50 minute review, be my be my guess. For all the interesting stuff we're gonna talk about, let's jump into philosophy of use. When I was at the barricade, I was talking about BOK guns, right, TD? Yep. I will still maintain my favorite BOK gun is a 22 long rifle pistol because the ammo is so freaking lightweight. Yep. Is it the most ballistically efficient? No. Reliable? No. Man stopper? No. None of the above. But it's lightweight and I can carry 200 rounds for lightweight. But I did say on Barricade, by the way, that the FN 5.7 would be a very viable option for your BOK because it is basically a 100 yard handgun that is 
easily um, ballistically efficient out to 100 yards. And I said, for an increase in weight, Crosswind. viable option. And I have been, ever since I filmed that over Barricade, toying with the idea of us, us integrating an FN 5.7 to the BOK. At least my personal BOK. The problem is, I ain't gonna go spend that money and dedicate a gun and a be okay. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't do it. But now, philosophy of use, this, my friends, is a very viable be okay option if you're willing to part with the money. I'm not going to say it's inexpensive. It's not. The ammo's not inexpensive as of yet. But dang, son, this is a be okay option. Right? Oh, yeah. And it gets better. So I'm going to jump. We're going to cover features. How did it shoot? Would we buy it? It is drilled and tapped for optic plates. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so talking about BOK, so you can put, this is a pistol I would recommend running a red dot on it because the cartridge is so ballistically efficient. For me, just my mileage, for me to reliably shoot out to 100 yards, I would like a red dot. How about you, TD? Oh yeah. I mean, we were shooting this and we pumped a lot of rounds through the sucker for testing. Did great, we'll talk about that. But with a red dot, 100 yards, easy breezy. Yeah. So you put a 1.5, 1.8 ounce optic setup here, drilled and tapped. You put this in your BOK, it's almost like you have an AR-15 in there. Maybe I should say AR-57. Yeah. Right? That, my friends, is an amazing BOK option. So my first philosophy of use is a bug out kit gun, a survival gun with a lot lighter weight than a nine millimeter or a 5.56. Yep. Huge improvement over even 22 uh, mag yeah. or 22 long rifle. Compared to what the original, if you wanted those same constraints, high cap, very low weight, you'd be looking at uh, Kel-Tec. The, the PMR, PMR 30. 30. And, you'd and be the PMR 30 is okay. It's fine, it the, but oof, this is a big improvement. The weakness on the 22 mag in our testing with the PMR 30 isn't the gun. I mean, it can be unreliable, but Caltech can square it away from you for you. I know quality control at Caltech, same old, same old. But it's the cartridge. The brass yep. is so damn thin on those. When you load them, it it dents the cartridge. It's not 1980 anymore when they made it a thicker brass. Yeah. Enough said on that. This is a superior cartridge. What Other philosophy of use, daily carry. Would you carry it? I think that's one of the reasons this is going to be so popular. Totally because agree. you have people for totally the, agree. carrying is way more widespread than ever. Yep. And people are looking at it going, yeah, I want as much on tap as I possibly can. Minimizing reloads, minimizing mm -hmm. my chance to fumble and, you know, get my nuts punched and in or whatever. it's 20 plus one. 20 plus one. It's flat shooting. It's low recoil. And it's skinny. It's skinny. The, the slide itself is only one inches wide. At the ambidextrous safety levers, it's 1.48 inches, which is substantially wider, but your main profile is around one inch, maybe 1.1, not counting the takedown le lever. That's pretty skinny. Dude. It reminds me of a super flat 1911. This basically is a profile of a 1911. Yeah. So it has a 4.94 a inch barrel. It's the, the size of a 1911. That makes it ideal for carry for a lot of different folks. Myself, I don't like carrying inside the waistband at least a five inch barrel. Yeah. Unless unless I have a, maybe an outside the waistband carry, maybe a belt slide holster or something like that. Um, so I'd say daily carry, EDC carry, I can predict right now that a lot of you guys are going to do it. Yeah. Let's talk about weight, because the empty weight of the Ruger 5.7, one of the many things they got right on this gun, and you're going to see us raving about many aspects of this gun. It's a genuine wet rave. Uh, Ruger doesn't know us. They didn't give us this gun. Again, it came from Gunnies. They don't give a crap about TMP. If anything, they hate us. <laughs> Even though I sold them like 10,000 guns with my reviews. Never mind. They this only is... remember the stuff you hate. <laughs> right. Yeah, he didn't like the heavy the Troy gun rail the, on the 556. The gun yeah. sight scout bolt gun. I hated that, and so they, he was all pissed about that. Anyways, back to the subject. You guys are going to carry this because it is 24.6 ounces empty. Smoking. Yes. Yes. 24.6 ounces. Get this. Loaded with 20, uh, 20 rounds. That's 20 plus one. Actually, just 20 rounds, not 20 plus one. 20 rounds of this stuff, 40 grain. Federal, if that's what you're running, that's 4.8 ounces for 20 uh, 20 rounds, 29.4 ounces total carry weight. It is going to be lighter than this Glock 19 fully loaded. 
dudes, that is a huge win. So super lightweight. That, by the way, rubber bands back to the POU recommendation for bug out kit, Tactical Doodle, right? Totally. So 26 and a half ounces, awesome. Uh, go to War Gun. It really depends on if you consider a 5.728 to go to war round. Yeah. I mean, compared to a 9mm, it's pretty capable. If, you, if you're if you running an SS197SR, that, that thing comes out fast. It's it, it reminds me of a Mini 357 SIG, really. So it's high velocity, small diameter. Uh, it is what it is. It's a creature. It, would it be my first choice? No, 10 millimeter would. Yeah. Oh, I want my Glock 20. I know it's heavier, but if 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 I'm stuck with a handgun, I'll do Glock 20. But I wouldn't totally discount it as a GTW option. How about you? It depends entirely on what you're doing. It's it, and what you want a, from your load. Yeah. Are you like? Is it a crash kit for the wilderness? Do you think you're gonna crash in Alaska? I'll go 10 mil then. That's another POU. Great bush pilot. Man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. Five seven two eight pistol, yeah. and it's coming tactical carbine. Because, dude, yeah. like, let's say you're a dude flying pipelines, and you you want something that you're probably not gonna have to use. You want fair capacity and low weight. There you go. I would rather have five seven if I, you know, day to day it sits in your backpack. You don't think about okay, it. Okay, but would you? I mean, if I'm flying pipelines as a pilot and building hours up in Alaska. I, I'd rather go with a Glock 2010 if I'm thinking about bear. In Alaska. Now, how about this? Let's say you're uh, by New Mexico and you're by the border. Mm. A lawless wasteland where anything can happen. So an anti-personnel defense gun. Yeah. Mm, I'd be on board. That's. I'd be on board. I think tempting. it's effective. It's actually proven in that capacity. I won't yeah. go into details. Uh, the 5728 is proven in being able to do that job. Philosophy of use discussion. Home defense, sure. It takes a light. On this, we have a beautiful flat desert beautiful. earth. Olite Baldir. <laughs> the Olite Valdir. <laughs> How do you say it? Valdir, uh, the Nordic goat of joy, peace, <laughs> and... I don't know. That's uh, a Swedish uh, chef that. making an appearance again. This is a great light. Uh, link below. And no, Olite did not give me this light. We purchased it with Patreon money. Uh, clap to Patreon members, by the way. You need to help me well clap, done, by fellas. the way. Thank you. Uh, they're the ones that bought the ammo for this, by the way. We bought, mm -hmm. uh, we put about, I don't know, 450 rounds through it. All, quite a yeah. few rounds. And the, it's Patreon money. Yep. We walked into Gunnies. We bought it from them. So we're not sponsored by anyone except Patreon members, TM peers. Thanks. Uh, home defense gun. Sure. You can do it. Uh, how about a trainer gun, recreational gun? Sure, if you can afford to shoot yeah, it. Yeah, it's money. That's an expensive recreational gun. But for training, maybe a female shooter, someone new to shooting, yeah. Yeah. It's not overly intimidating, uh, but a recreational, probably not. A uh, hunting gun. It depends on your jurisdiction. Is it legal to hunt with 5728? But I think with a red dot? Yeah. Out to 100 yards? But depending on what you're shooting, I'm talking game-wise, no, I wouldn't go with a, a deer with it. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to go into the specifics, but yeah. Uh, let's go. How about hogs? Yeah. I would actually like be, to try it. It'd be it. tough. I'd be interested. Down in Texas, go hog hunting with your Ruger 5.7. I'd be down. I would love it as a sidearm. Yeah. But that speaks to a whole system built around 5.7. Yeah. And that's and interesting. Since their tactical carving is going to come out, by the way, we're kidding about that, but uh, probably not. I think they they are going to come out with yeah. it. Yeah, if you're, you're going to see a lot of guys doing com doing companion builds. Yeah, not builds, but pairing. So they're going to get a Ruger 5.7, a Ruger 5.7 TAC carbine, and that's going to be their system. Yep. Uh, and there's people that whatever Ruger comes out with, they eat it up. Yep. They eat it up. Enough of philosophy of use. We may bounce back to it, but we got so much to talk about. Do you want to add anything right now? Uh, I was just going to mention caliber wise. I when you compare these against uh, AR pistols, when people talk about PDWs, mm -hmm. I love the 5.7 a lot more because shooting an AR pistol out of a short barrel is oh. concussive. Yeah, uh, CD and I, by the way, reviewed multiple AR-15 pistols uh, last year, and by the way, some of them have not even posted yet. Yeah, because we generate too much content. I don't know if you know this, but we're no, we're not kidding. There's I mean, I have literally 50 videos right now that are unposted because you guys don't watch it fast enough. Sorry, it is what it is. They are out there. You will see them post eventually. And without a can on them, they are hellish to shoot. They look super cool. Everyone likes the, oh yeah, look, it's so compact and portable. Yeah. You could throw it in a backpack. Yeah. I would not 
take a little seven inch no. AR in my bug out kit. Without a can on it. With no can and no ears. Unless you have hearing pro that you can put on. But who's gonna do that in the heat of the battle? Oh, let me put my that's muffs on first. Yeah. Run a can on it. So that's a good point. 5728 is loud though. <laughs> it's if you shoot this without hearing protection, dude, you're gonna you're gonna wake up. It's louder. Yeah. There we go. Uh, we'll put a suck less name tape on there. How you doing at the web store, by the way? What you Pretty got in good. sock? A uh, couple Shark of patches? Ones. Yeah. Still do you around. have suck less? Mm, I had like 10 last time I looked. So yeah. I have the stuff. gray Those version of the... Do you have owl patches? Yeah. This is a 6,000 hour KC-135 tanker grandfather Turkish patch that I have for, for my mini turkey, turkey deployments. Turkish! Yeah. Um, guys say, when are you going to order? What's your answer? Um... It's TD's monkey, man. We don't need to go into that right now, but you tell him. Contact him via the web store, nuttingfancybigcartel.com, onto features. First up, the grip is excellent. The overall format is excellent. We did say it's about the size of a 1911. I love they came out, TD, with a, I'll call it a long slide version. I would be a little bit less enthused on this if it was like a four inch barrel. How about you? Yeah. What if it came out here? So their first Ruger 57 is right here. Nah. I wouldn't be as enthusiastic as, about unless, it. Maybe if you're making the case for a, a subcompact. But, but it's going to be a ton more blast coming out of that yeah. 5728, a huge fireball. This thing already does some fireball spitting due Honestly, to the cartridge. Even if you did a long slide of this, I'd, I'd probably be pretty happy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Give it another inch, inch and a half or something. What if you do this, Ruger? For your tactical carbine, why don't you scrap everything you're doing and just do like he's saying, do a Glock 17L size one and, a, a, and attach a pistol brace to it. Yeah. Boom. There's your PCC. Yep. Dude, that would be awesome. PCC threaded barrel from the factory. Yep. So do you what? can put a can on it and then have like a, a third gen Glock, a hollow po uh, portion back here that you have a detachable legal, no paperwork, pistol brace. Yeah. They would not be able to keep that gun in stock. Be flying. Be, this is going to be flying. In a 40 to 50 round extended mag. Yeah, a minimum 30 round clip. It's just a companion piece to the Ruger 5.7 pistol. You're welcome. From you can do what project. all the other companies do and give it some name that has TAC Ops and Special in the title. Yeah, you just the, increase the sale by Ruger 5.7 TAC Ops Special <laughs> Supreme. The overall look of this pistol is, has the design language of the Security 9. And the Ruger LCP2, which we really, really like. Um, and, and the grip is like that too. What do you want to show them? I was just going to... It shows how different it is against the original 5.7. It is so much cooler. I actually love the grip of the of FN 5.7. And I actually love the gun. It has some quirks like the safeties up here. But the rest of the gun is, is good. Um, we, we talked about the safety already, but it's basically the same size, though, isn't it? Yeah. They're the very similar. Size, right? It's a testament to how well the original 5.7 was designed, that it's right. still so modern and doesn't feel that dated. Yeah. I just felt like it didn't have the best stippling. I remember that. And these uh, are kind of enclosed on the serrations. Yeah. I, I'm going to disagree with you. I think the FN 5.7 grip was, the, at least the, the texturing is really good. FN gets texturing right. And I use them as a standard measure, measure just like on their shotgun, the FN SLP. Back to this. Grip panels are awesome. They're stippled, really good traction. The span across here is going to be wide, guys, because of the cartridge. Yeah. It's, it's longer overall length than most of your pistol rounds. Uh, but it is thin in this dimension right here. And show them the box magazine. This is your 20 round magazine that they're putting together. So this has to house this. And by the way, the filling is courtesy of Tactical Doodle. So it does not come with a white Ruger and red 5.7 or this. TD does that. He he fills them. Yeah. He paint fills some them. Paint pens. It's kind of cool. Looks cooler. Great grip uh, for what it is. And that is a 5.728 five, chambering. Uh, we like it. I like they don't have interchangeable back straps and all that other crap. <laughs> yeah. We don't need that, especially with a, such a wide span grip. I really hate that. I'm sure they're functional. And I'm sure some people like them. If you have more than three pistols, you're drowning in all these little tiny strips and things yeah, of plastic right, right. and weird keys and Allen's. But everyone's going to everyone's gonna just leave them in the case yeah. that they came in. Speaking yeah. of which, where's the case? You throw them away and never touch them again. Did you get it or no? Yeah, it's right over there. 
So this is a grip, it's awesome. The trigger guard is pretty good. It's large enough for gloves, we like that. Uh, I do have the weapon light kind of uh, occluding the front. It's mostly flat. I recommend putting a span of skateboard tape on there. They should have carried the texturing on the grip over to the front of the trigger guard, right? Team? Yeah. They didn't do that. It is very slick on there. You'll see us, as we always do, rest our index finger on in front of the trigger guard. We shoot good that way. It does it come out to is. a good square, though. So yeah. you can leverage it enough. Yeah. Uh, and unlike some other designs we've been reviewing, it's not slanted. Good magazine release. I think it is reversible for you lefty types. The trigger is pretty excellent, actually. Uh, before we talk about that, you got to understand this is not a striker fired pistol. It is a preloaded or partially loaded double action only. So there is an internal hammer in this gun, just like the Security 9. So different. And I think the 5.7 is like that. I'm trying to remember. <clears throat> Nevertheless, it provides a really nice trigger pull. Five pounds, 10 ounces on my scale. There is a lot of take up. Let's take a look at that. The reset is kind of far forward. Here's your trigger pull right here on the Ruger 5.7. <laughs> There's your first fart. What'd you do? And here's your reset. Once again, some guys are saying the reset is really far forward. Uh, I don't know if it's really far forward, but it's at least halfway. I didn't really notice it being a problem, did you? Mm -mm. I love the trigger on it. I don't know, as I've always said, that we're reset snobs. We, we probably just suck. We have been, with some of our latest test pistols, shooting to reset because they do shoot much better that way because they have such a far forward yeah. trigger. Uh, a case in point would be the Taurus G3. Center. That trigger pulls so deep, it's best to shoot to reset. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time traveling with the trigger. Metal trigger, it's rounded. Thank you for not putting a flat blade on this. Yeah. That's a trend, and it's going to go bye-bye, says TMP. It is an aluminum trigger. And as such, we noted no flex in firing. We actually loved the trigger, right? Yep. The whole time we're saying this trigger is awesome. I love, and it reminded me of how much I didn't like the FN 5.7 trigger. You did trigger. say that. You were I, saying to that. To this day, it's one of my least favorite ones. Right. It's just something about the reach and right. the length, and I just could never get into a groove with it. Ruger calls the trigger the secure action trigger. That is their proprietary name. Again, it is a partially pre-cocked double action only enough of the trigger. It is excellent. A five slot Picatinny rail is right here. Let me remove this O-light so you can see it. I'll use my SOG Ace handy dandy right here to pop that lever off. It's hard to do with the uh, gloves. Boom, there you go. Weapon light off. Generous, generous amount of rail. Yes, really nice rail on it. And then that takes us to the slide. Again, very narrow in presentation. Nice big cutout here. Good serrations, forward serrations, Love it. rear serrations. And on these longer pistols, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I kind of like the forward serrations. I love them. Because on a short pistol, I don't come, I don't like coming up here and doing a press check because my hand's right near the muzzle. Yeah. But on a longer pistol like this, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So really nice job. They're sharp, they're purposeful, really nice milling. This is a billet slide, by the way, which is interesting. Allows them to do this very nice milling on the Ruger 5.7. It's a good looking pistol, I think, overall, don't you think? It shows you that Ruger is not asleep at the wheel, like some companies, mm -hmm. that they're looking around and they're seeing people drop two grand on customized Glocks. And they're, you know, if you look through any parts catalog these days, people are selling sculpted, right. serrated, all kinds of different funky lines. To stand out from the crowd. Yeah. You said something, you said it reminds you of the Zev Glock. Yep, totally does. This, because it kind of has that like you're saying right now, aftermarket milling yep. look to it. Really nice job on the, uh, on the slide. How about the sights, TD? I like them. They're nice. I wish the front was a little bit thicker, just a touch, but that's just me. Um, I love the thinness of it. Again, we have a lime green light pipe uh, insert standard complaint on these. They can be delicate. You can break them and field. I'm not gonna go on a rant for you guys about that. Um, they are delicate. However, they do provide an amazing sight picture. Uh, and you do have that with the Ruger 5.7. And what TD is saying is that there's a lot of air in there's, the sights. Yeah, you can either reduce the, the 
the blade width on this or you can thicken the front sight post. I don't want a thicker post myself. I don't. Yeah. I if, like the precision. As long as it's unified, because there are a few times I noticed that, you know, my front one would just be a little bit in the way. Yeah. And then I wouldn't notice, you know, it's just a tick off, but at long enough ranges, you definitely have I'm gonna have take some of the clutter off the background, by the way, so they can see the pistol good. This is a, an AV8 4055. Watch, totally awesome with an NHM. That, that's a hard brand to find sometimes. AV8? Something, you'll find them when they're in stock, but you'll look they for certain sell models out. and it's... They sell out. They'll come out with a model and then poof, it's yep. gone. Okay, we'll talk more about this stuff on the table here in a second. I feel like this is sites. pretty high for a site. It is. Do you think they're planning for a suppressor it or something? It makes me wonder if they were going to come out with a threaded barrel version. This is not threaded right now. It seems like it's set up that way. Yeah. The rear sight is fantastic. It's serrated. It reminds me of one of my favorite sight sets, and that is the Heine Straight 8s. Yep. It's kind of a tactical target, uh, not tactical, but a target sight with serrations like this. So notice a clean back profile, and it's fully adjustable. Fully adjustable. Which is, for the FN5 set, I keep saying FN, but the 5728 load is good because it comes in so many different weights. And so your, your point of impact is going to be varying. And so to have an adjustable rear sight is awesome. And we did adjust it in field. You'll see the footage somewhere. I think it was shooting low for us. And so I just cranked the rear sight up and it helped. Controls. This is your takedown lever. We're not going to take it down right now. It is relatively simple. All you're going to do is take the magazine out. You're going to lock the slide to the rear. And Ruger says just use the tip of your magazine and you're gonna push this button. You just push that button and it will pop out and then you rotate this lever down 90 degrees and then lo and behold, you can remove the slide. In fact, on Ruger's website, they have some really cool short, like one yeah. minute videos about assembly, disassembly and other uh, technical points on the Ruger 5.7. If you have any questions, just go to the Ruger site, check them out. We're not gonna do it here. We'll just show you some takedown footage along the way. I thought it was simple to take down and you can understand it's delayed blowback action when you do it. It is a single recoil spring. Again, kind of a double action only uh, design. I like the slide rails on there. I showed them to you just a little Love while them. ago when I took, took it down. Uh, blocky, and this is an aluminum chassis gun, dudes. So uh, the chassis is made of aluminum, not steel. That's why it's so lightweight. And that's all you need for a 5728. So don't put steel in it if you don't have to put steel in it. That's another thing that Ruger did right. Back to the control. So that's a takedown lever. This is a slide stop, our slide release. And I think I did use this in shooting. I didn't think yeah. I have a problem loading it with that. You can slingshot it if you want, but I think I was just pushing this to load it. And it worked good. The slide retraction force on the 5728, since it is a blowback, is substantial. And I don't know if your gal would like it. If you're thinking about getting this for your wife or something, you might want to see if it's, the retraction force is good enough for her. Yeah. Just a thought. It is equipped with ambidextrous safety levers. They're not plastic. They're made of metal. I suspect mimmed levers. They're on both sides. They're very low profile. And I'll tell you what, dudes, it's like a really nice 1911 safety. Yep. I'm talking about super positive. It doesn't snick on and off unless you want it to. And for right? a, they're great safeties for a carry gun. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to put the safety on. It has the paddle yeah. safety and the trigger, right, dudes? You can ignore it. It's just like the MMP series. They do the same thing, and they do it so it can sell in different markets. Yeah. But it's something, and you can still put it on there, and I wouldn't do anything to modify it because it's, mm -mm. it's so positive, and it didn't accidentally come on at all. I do wish they would use just a little bit of this length and put it on the slide release. It's a little Good point. because I remember that the FN is a little bit bigger, and I did like the release on that one. Does it uh, does it uh, annoy you that they didn't put any traction on the Mac button? Not really. I didn't notice any problem with it at all. I didn't notice it till you mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, notice by the way, they do have an indentation here for your thumb. Undercut on the trigger guard. I forgot to mention that. Nice beaver tail, but not obnoxious. Mm -hmm. A la Ruger American pistol. Yeah. Yeah, which, by the way, is flatlined for sales. Called it. <laughs> called it. It is in the Isle of Misfit Toys. Yeah, what? For Misfit a while, guns it at your like gun store. everyone was kind of going hog wild with beaver tails. They hate me for that review, by the way, too. It's very odd. They hate me for that review. That's a great pistol. I'm talking Ruger, not it's you It's great. Guys. You should buy 20. That's garbage. I don't like it. Uh, but I love this one. So I'm making up for it. Controls. 
I think that's most of everything we're gonna talk about. Oh, you have a one o'clock mounted external extractor and Ruger says that's the only place they had to put it because the barrel diameter is so small, they can't really put it here at the three o'clock position. Pretty interesting. Yeah. The barrel is nitrided. Actually, the entire pistol, the metallic parts are nitrided. That will give you some rust resistance, I guess. And so will this. Sheesh. Second part of the review, oh you're welcome. God. I would have preferred probably tenifer on it, but it's something. It'd be cool. Something. I do love how they did the barrel, though. It is case hardened to do what? Guess why they case hardened the it? Higher pressure. Yep, and throat erosion of the 5728. Mmm, pretty excellent. It's pretty spicy. So it's going to last a little bit and better. Spicy, I was talking about your fart. <laughs> That's features, more or less, of I, the Ruger 57. Oh, you have one more well, point I'm you want to make? Well, I'm smack talking it. I love how this being a, a freaking $600 57 gun looks better and higher quality than the FN at $1,300. It bugged me so much when we had it. I just have it cheesy. Yeah, show them to it. Show it to them. Because on theirs, it, it's like this insert. Oh, yeah, it's plastic, right? And poly. So all, it's just plastic top to bottom mm -hmm. in it. it. Dude, for $1,400, yeah. it's, you got a point. it's cheesy. I didn't mind it because it was so lightweight, but here we see a manufacturer using more metal at the same weight. They aren't that different, though. Because the the, the 5.7 is what, like 21 ounces without a mag? Mm, so I'd have you to add look in at the mag, exact weight. But my point is, they're both lightweight. Yeah. They're both lightweight. On to how it shot. What did you think about shooting uh, the, I keep saying FN, sorry if I slip, uh, the Ruger 5.7 Tactical Doodle. How did you like it? Awesome. Uh, we'll give it as far as shooting dynamics and how much we personally enjoyed pumping those 450 rounds through it uh, in the last two days, uh, 10 out of 10. It was rad. The trigger was awesome. Recoil impulse, awesome. Accuracy was phenomenal, assuming we did our part. Now, a lightweight pistol, guys, like I've always said, is hard to shoot. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful when you're pulling the trigger to maintain sight picture. Any jerking of the trigger is going to throw rounds, and you'll see TD's groups. He's yeah, probably some of mine of that. sucked. Uh, very accurate. Remember, it is a straight line barrel. It does not come out of battery a la browning. It's not a browning tilt barrel. It's a delayed blowback, so the barrel is always in line. That's good. Again, it has big old slide rails, I think, and this is your accuracy that you can achieve with the FN5. Here I go again, Ruger 5.7. <laughs> Great group that gets double exclamation points because this is operational, dudes. This is standing post shoulder surgery. Yes, I am shooting right handed again. 27 degrees, cold, standing at 10 yards. So do that. That is, dude, look at this group. Smoking. Freaking A. I'm going to show you inset of us shooting. Proof positive. There is no fakery going on here. Awesome. This is the first time I ever shot the gun. Not bad. Not bad. Up arrow. I mean, at seven yards, that, that would be an acceptable Center. group for me personally. At 10 yards, it's phenomenal. Look at this. <laughs> Three shots almost in one hole. Ruger 5.7. The load doesn't really matter because I don't want to give promotion since they don't give me any ammo. Yeah. <laughs> Screw them. Standard 40 grain. Screw them. Some generic 5.7 load. This is 10 yards. This is after adjusting the sights. I didn't do it quite enough. You can see this group. Look at that, dude. Three shots at 10 yards standing. Here, here's TDs. Yeah. What the hell? Awesome, dude. Okay, so he was supposed to be shooting at that, that, and that. What are your groups? I didn't, I didn't I know what to like circle. This I did like five. Great gun. Okay, so thing. that's one group there. I don't even think that was really on. No, actually, you did have a group here. It was like one, two, three, four. This was actually your better group, and it went on to the other paper. And this is probably your group here. One, two, three, four. I, I'm going to tell you guys, that's probably how you're going to shoot the 5.7. I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard to shoot accurately because it's lightweight. I'm not lying. Uh, that's a good group, good group, good group, good group. Accuracy is phenomenal. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, will you need to train with it? Yes. Here's something you can do with your Ruger 5.7 is uh, dry fire it. Ruger says to dry fire the 5.7 is absolutely A-OK. -okay. Don't do it when it's taken down. But when it's put together, they say you can dry fire it and practice. And I'll tell you what, dry firing is a huge way to train and just practice and save your ammo. And then when you go out, you're going to see your groups shrink. I would probably start shooting your Ruger 5.7 at five yards. Work out to seven yards. I would probably not waste time shooting it beyond, I'm talking standing, 10 yards. Uh, rested, 
leaning your arm against something 25 yards, if you have an optic on it, I say go for it 25 yards, a-okay. And a lot of you guys are a lot more skilled than we are, and at 25 yards open sights, you can just own it. Although I've yet to see people like that at the range. I'm sure they exist somewhere. Yeah, reliability was 100%, absolutely no problems at all. We didn't have any light primer strikes, we had no failures to feed, we didn't have any stove pipes, did we? Nope. 100% great trigger, great shooting dynamics, uh, noise, uh, we had double ears so we didn't really notice it. We weren't shooting at night, we didn't really notice the fireball. Thankfully it has ba basically a five inch barrel. Awesome, awesome, would we buy it? Absolutely. I'd be all on board. Absolutely, in fact, I'm gonna buy this as a cast member, as a personal addition to the armory. Uh, from Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a deal for what it is. Yeah. Ruger has done so many good things on this pistol. In fact, uh, I can't really think of anything they've done wrong other than maybe the black color is the first one they come out with, but that's so minor. It's the smallest. It is an absolute face awesome. to the Belgians. <laughs> they they spent all this time and all this money. Yeah. Look, Hans, look at our new caliber. Look at how pretty it is. Look at how precious it is. That sounds like is. a German dude. It's always a made up one. Ah, yes, let's sell the pistol, $1,400. That sound you hear is the sound of the FN57 production line <laughs> coming to an end. Shuddering. Uh, those are not going to sell anymore with the Ruger 5.7. I'll predict that right now. It ain't going to happen. It feels so much better and so much more worth the money when you hold this. You yeah. hold it and go, dude, this is rad. Yeah. Awesome. And then you look at the price tag and you say, oh, wait, what? Yeah, so Gunny's as of now is selling this for 639 bucks. Taking orders, y'all. Taking orders, and I think that's more than a fair price. Go to Gunny's again, once again. Uh, local folks, I'm sure they'll go there and check it out. Uh, punch Wyatt in the shoulder at any given time. He does deserve that. Uh, by the way, this is a B29 Superfort in one to 200 scale. This is a postage stamp model. So cool. One of the bombers that won World War II. Such an interesting plane, too. I did ask you this. I'm going to see if you remember. Why didn't they use the B-29 in the European Theater of Operations? Why was it constrained only to the Pacific Ops? Why? Because it was very capable. It was fast, high altitude, heavily armed. Why? I thought they didn't Bigger bomb load than a B-17, substantially. They didn't really need the range. Ramp space. Oh. Too big. It, it, they needed. They thought it'd be better to have more B-17s, more B-24s uh, than B-29s, and so that's why they used it in the Pacific Theater. I love the story. Isn't this the one that ended up being the the Russians' ripoff? They had one that landed, and they had stripped it, and then rebuilt their own variation. Probably, probably. What's a nose arm on the side, by the way? Let's show them that. So we're always going to show you some fun stuff on the tabletop, not just a subject that we are reviewing. Very cool plane. And that is accompanied by this little tiny T-38. Look how precious. I want to put it right here. Contrast. Look at that. That is a gray T-38. <laughs> I don't even know what the scale is. It's like the size of a dime, y'all. So this is a plane I flew in the, in the U.S. Air Force. Lots of time in the T-38 Talon. A plane my dad named, Tactical Doodle's grandfather, this is a really cool van. Look at this, dudes. Surfboards on top. How long have we had this? <laughs> years and years. Years. This is one of the boys' toys. And TD just broke it out. It's like, man, let's put some of those old vehicles on there. I'm like, do it. M2R Olight. Super awesome light. Uh, they did have color. a programming issue with this. I think they fixed it. And uh, highly recommended. This is in the very limited edition FDE brown coloration. Back to the Ruger 5.7. Yeah, we would absolutely buy this gun. We are going to buy it. It is going to change the face of the 5.728. Mark our words. Do you think that's an exaggeration? Totally. You think it's an exaggeration? No. I think that's exactly what it's going to do to the market. A lot of people are going to buy this gun and watch what happens. 5.728 is mm -hmm. going to come down and cost. It's going to become more available, and you're going to have other gun makers jump into the fray now that Ruger's done it. And hopefully more ammo. Taurus is probably going to come out with one. Because Who else? I feel like the ammo market for it's kind of, we don't have the full breadth. Yeah. You don't have like some super no. hot personal defense loads. Dude, I want the SS-190 AP round for it. Yeah. I want the LE round for it, but it's almost impossible to find. I want, uh, like, that won't be reissued because it's illegal. What about like for a, civilians. a buffalo boar round? bring it but you know already these for the really premium stuff like the ss197r it's going to be like 48 to 52 cents per round 
plus shipping, plus yeah, tax. Yeah, I wouldn't want to get into a gunfight knowing it's going to cost me more than 60 cents a round. Again, we're not over the moon on 5728. We much prefer a 556, a 76239. But when SAWC trumps, yeah. we're just saying this is an outstanding option for daily carry, even home defense. Absolutely a bug out kit gun. It is highly recommended. It will change the market. Unlike some other minor players like, I don't know, the CMMG Mark 57 series of yeah, AR-57. They did like a Banshee that yeah. I think takes FN mag. Cool guns. They didn't change the market. Uh -uh. They're a niche player. This is not a niche player. It's a major player. Wait for the changes. Buy with confidence. It's highly recommended. Nothing fancy project. Thanks for the help, TD.